thank you so much Vivek Ji, Omesh Ji, uh, Dr. Kumar and Vijay for this opportunity. Uh, can I have my presentation? Ji. Can I share karo? Uh, you can also share. Uh, or you want us to share, we can share. I can try and share. We're sharing. We're sharing. Okay, you're sharing. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, next slide, please. Just give me a minute. No problem. So in the next maybe shayad, uh, maybe 10, 10 minutes, 7 to 10 minutes, I will talk a little bit about cancer research and advocacy. How can we, how can we meet? What is, what is a patient advocate got to do with uh, cancer research uh, particularly? So because we all think about cancer research is a very high-fi thing. And you know, what, what can a patient or a patient advocate or a caregiver uh, have to offer? Uh, and that is absolutely, if this is our concept, hai, so this is an absolutely wrong concept. This is not... Uh, cancer research is not meant to be conducted in an ivory tower mein or, um, and then given to the patients. It has to be done. Uh, we have to have, uh, we have to work hand in hand. Next slide, please. So I think Shurwa se hum, uh, yahi baat kar rahe hai, so I'll go quickly. Uh, what exactly is a patient advocate? So a patient advocate is any patient. So uh, someone who has an, an experience, a lived experience of cancer. So or, uh, either a patient who currently has cancer, yeah, somebody who has gone through the experience of cancer is now a cancer survivor or the caregiver. So somebody who's an informal caregiver or a carer. Ye, ye, ek, this is one aspect. And the second aspect is that person is engaging in advancing the good of uh, people like themselves and the community of cancer caregivers and cancer patients. So this does not include paid professionals. Next slide, please. And why should a patient advocate get engaged in research? So on the right side, ye, uh, this is Candice Henley. She is uh, one of the uh, leading cancer advocates worldwide. And what she has said is that every patient ka jo experience hai with cancer, wo alag cheez hoti hai. everybody has a different experience. But together, when, when patients and caregivers come together and share, what is good for them, what, what worked well for them during the experience as a community, they can add their thoughts together and make everything about cancer care and cancer research relatable and relevant. So this is important for representation. And that gives the patient's voice uh, an important aspect, an important seat at the table. And it is very important. So when we are cancer research, we all have our degrees in oncology. We have DM, we have MCH. But a patient has a PhD in the cancer experience. And that is a very valuable insight that can help to guide what is the best research, cancer research. Next slide. So what are the roles of a patient advocate in cancer research? So from every step of the process, a patient advocate can contribute. So right from the start, how, what is the most important question that we should be asking? How can we improve cancer care? Which is which is that one question? What are patient concerns in the can, in the design of the trial? How can we get more patients included in the research question? How can we accrue more patients on the trial? So, uh, when patient enroll in the uh, trial, mein, we normally give them an, a consent form to, so that they under, we ensure that they are coming to understand what we are going to do. How can we ensure that that consent form is appropriate for the patient? Patient advocates also will provide feedback. Ki jo bhi hum kar rahe hai trial mein, jo hum biomarker uh, kar rahe hai, jo hum biopsies kar rahe hai, blood test kar rahe hai, wo sab acceptable hai patients ke liye. Jo inclusion exclusion criteria hai, wo, sa wo sari acceptable hai. Um, cancer research study ke liye hum funding kaise mil uh, milenge, that the patient advocates can help. Uh, feedback during the study while we are conducting the study and study khatam hone ke baad, how do we disseminate the results to the patients next slide please so various steps during the research process from the conception of the study to the conducting of the study and the completion of the study patients patients and patient advocates are vitally important at every step. So from identifying the, the research question, guiding the trial design, identifying what are what is an important endpoint. Normally, uh, as cancer research, our endpoints are survival. How can we improve survival? How can we improve cure? After uh, 
after many many years of discussing with patients we have now understood that also other than the survival so the quantity of life the quality is important so quality of life um the toxicities how can we reduce the toxicities of cancer treatment how can we improve quality of life all of these are also important endpoints and that can come only from actively engaging with the um, patient advocates while conducting the study we can the uh, patient advocates can define the relevant patient populations we can go to to help improve the accrual in uh, complete the study faster identify the patient burdens in participation um, etc and then after completion to uh, disseminate the results the importance of the study results next slide please so what are the roles and opportunities of a patient advocates at various levels and that also that depends upon the patient's experience as an advocate and the scientific understanding of the patient of the patient and the advocate so depending upon the experience level at a low experience level there are multiple opportunities to participate in various clinical trial research and as that experience level increases the uh, the opportunities decrease but there are multiple opportunities to sit on the national boards uh, various cooperative groups etc next slide please so starting from patient advocacy in framing research questions so when we start to do uh, clinical trial research the question that we are asking how do we improve the care of the patient how do we give better how do we better uh, cure this cancer that research question is one of the most important steps in doing research and while we decide that research question we have there is an interplay between the need of the patient what the what the researcher has a priority for what the funding agency has a priority for what the institution has a priority for so all of these things have to meet together and then decide which is the best and perhaps the the most possible research question that needs to be taken forward so it may not be the best but the most possible that can be done and ultimately at the end of it the patient need has to be the priority next slide please so a very uh, a very good example which all of us all of us may know dr abhay bhang uh, when he returned from the us his priority was to work on sickle cell anemia that was his area of expertise and then when he engaged with the locals and he had a local council uh, a meeting of the local uh, council he realized that infant mortality was the big question there that was a huge problem and he was convinced that he needed to work on infant mortality and i think the rest is history so after listening to people in the villages he started uh, working to reduce infant and maternal mortality next up side please and we in a very small way we have tried to involve patient advocates in our research planning so this is a study which we have not started yet we have just uh, got approval by our ethics committee in this study we are trying to see an older people with cancer how can we use an intervention which consists of thoda exercise uh, meditation cognitive training uh, these patients can we reduce the effect of chemotherapy on their cognition so uh, an intervention to lower the chemotherapy related cognitive dysfunction next slide please so this i, I have just taken a picture of jo hum hum likhte hain the protocol to send to the uh, to ethics committee so we had interviewed 10 people patients with cancer who came to our uh, outpatient department uh, who were on chemotherapy and we showed we discussed with them ki ye hum soch rahe hain to do this study ki what do you think would you be able so this study will include going for exercise you know visiting the physiotherapist doing bahut uh, uh, sare question aise hai jo aapko bharna padega you have to do the cognitive testing ye possible hai aapko kya lagta hai this is important and we had taken their opinions and we uh, put it together we changed a bit so many of them said ki hum har din to nahi aa payenge we will be able to come maybe once or twice a week um, half of them said ki unke paas smartphone hai so they might be able to join online for an exercise program so we incorporated that in the in our protocol so this is a ye thoda sa uh, baby effort hi hai to try and get patients inputs during the planning of the study but i hope that you know with a more um, concerted patient advocacy we can do this in a far better way to improve the uh, the the way that we uh, plan and write clinical trials next slide please next slide please so bahut sare advantages hai to engage patient advocates 
they will improve it will definitely make the uh, all our research uh, cancer research patient centric it will improve feasibility acceptability uh, better rigor more relevant to patients higher quality there will be mutual learning building of new skills uh, we will be able to help disseminate research finding and improve the trust of the research community and therefore increase the impact of the patient voice next slide please but everything is not rosy there are definitely issues with patient engagement one is the challenge of engaging patient advocates um, we there is a perceived lack of scientific knowledge and that may be frustrating both for the for the advocates as well as for the researchers uh, same patients are recruited for engagement who have been part of the research with the with the principal investigator researcher so that pool is very small and sometimes there is a tokenistic approach ki ye ek tick ek tick mark se new check check mark ho gaya ki humne baat kiya hai patient se so that should not be it should be a true true collaboration and a true a uh, meeting of minds uh, next slide please and uh, you know there are multiple barriers it's not clear why patients you know not not everybody recognizes ki patient advocates should be included in research and thank thank you vivek for bringing this uh, subject to the fore uh, so we must encourage granting agencies to require that patient advocates should be a part of the planning and in the long term there should be a, a project to demonstrate that the value of patient advocates in uh, bringing patient advocates and researchers together then researchers are worried about saying the wrong thing you know because these are you know we are talking about there are various uh, maybe delicate things that we are discussing during uh, uh, the trial and we don't exactly know how to communicate well so there should be you know very there should be safe places to communicate um, there should be training programs in the long term researchers don't know how to begin to work with advocates we don't know how to include advocates in research so multiple issues are there and there are multiple uh, barriers and multiple ways that we can uh, bridge these barriers both in the long term and the short term and uh, both in the short term and the long term sorry <laughs> next slide and this is from the point of view of the researcher now what about the advocate there are multiple benefits and there are also burdens so this was a survey that was done uh, in 176 uh, patient advocates and most of them said that they found the work rewarding almost everybody said it was rewarding it was empowering it had a positive impact on their lives but at the same time at least a third of the patients said that it did they did feel experience symptoms of burnout and the advocate said that it did result in exhaustion so 51% said it resulted in exhaustion sadness a third of them said it made them anxious and more than a third said that grief of their own cancer their, their grief made it hard to maintain their work as advocates next slide please so we need training and evaluation for patient advocates why do we need it because if we do if we don't have training and we don't evaluate the impact then it just becomes tokenism again so next slide please uh, there are multiple organizations asco bmj force all of them have various in person as well as online uh, courses for training and they do they have evaluated impact as well i showed you one of the surveys so multiple surveys have been done to evaluate the impact of advocacy next slide please and there are multiple training options i skip this i think we are running a little late in the week so i skip this there are multiple training options that we can uh, include patient advocates in journal clubs and discussions and lab meetings or teaching etc next slide please I think I skip this as well. So this is patient-centered outcome research and patient advocates. What kind of actions we can do? So from the planning to actions uh, to the outcomes. Next slide, please. And most of the societies, the the major uh, scientific bodies of uh, oncology, so ESMO, ASCO, they are uh, great supporters of this concept of patient advocates, and they do incorporate patient advocates in their meetings at a reduced rate. Uh, uh, some of them free of cost, and there are. there are various fora in these uh, meetings and in these societies for patient advocates next slide please so patient advocates have to be an integral part of cancer research they they should be involved in all aspects and but all this involvement will require training as well as uh, education and evaluation of the impact in india there are very few patient advocates and we actively need to engage to improve the, to increase the involvement of patient advocates thank you so much